Thank you all very much. Before I start, I'd like you to notice this vest I got. My daughter gave it to me for Christmas, and my wife said if I didn't wear it tonight, she was leaving. <laughs> if anybody would like to buy this sucker, come see me at the garage tomorrow. <laughs> The, uh, I guess some of you who have been racers for years wondered why I picked Don O'Reilly to uh, say the kind words about myself and my career. And uh, I want to get into that in a little bit. But first, I want to thank the Rotary Club. Um, I got been in several Hall of Fames, but this is particularly special in your hometown. Uh, to be honored this way, and um, uh, I don't really know how to to explain the difference between this one and the rest of them, but it's really special, and I very, very much appreciate it. And uh, I wish that it, uh, your club and your award received uh, a little bit more uh, praise from the racing community because I think that what you're trying to do or what you are doing is um, uh, very, very helpful in racing. Uh, maybe this kind of sounds like uh, backslapping, but I think in any successful society, you got to honor your heroes and your leaders. And uh, So, the Rotary Club, uh, are you satisfied that uh, you understand how much I appreciate this? <laughs> Thank you, All right, now I want to introduce my wife. Stand up, Margie. And at that table over there is all the eunuchs. Would you stand up? <laughs> Now, Dewey, the dark-complected one, he's really not a eunuch. He's my, he's my vice president in charge of maintenance. We had to get that straight, Dewey. He's been with me about 40-some years. He's the one that could give you the stories. <laughs> okay, let's get to Don O'Reilly. The reason I asked him, if it hadn't been for Don O'Reilly and another local sports writer named Bernie Kahn, Smokey Eunuch would have never been invented. The first picture that anybody ever took of me and published was Don O'Reilly in a magazine called Speed Age. Back in those days, when racing first started in 47, to me is when it started uh, with cars. I'd started motorcycles before that. I had a little interruption where they had an argument with some sneaky Jap and some German asshole. <laughs> it took, took five years out of my life and uh, Don didn't quite describe it. I, uh, I started off in Marrakech, Africa, uh, flew a B-17 over there, ended up flying with the French Foreign Legion for a while. I flew the 97th Bomb Group in Europe, B-17s. I flew with the Flying Tigers, and I flew the Hump, and uh, when the war was over, I never came back because I was afraid they'd put me in a B-24. So I came back from Okinawa when the war was over. So when I got started racing, um, for some reason, Don O'Reilly, who had started a magazine called Speed Age, all we had up to that time was two weekly rags, as I remember. Of course, you know, in 50-something years, you're, uh, and you, as you get older, your memory ain't as good as it ought to be. One of them was run by a guy named uh, Walter Bull. Is that right, Don? And the other one was Economaki. We called them rags. They were just like a half a newspaper. 
and they were, uh, they were damn good for what they were, but it really didn't get the job done. So Riley, somehow or other, he gets the idea that we need an Honest to God racing magazine. So he and his wife and a couple of his friends, they started a magazine called Speed Aids. If it hadn't been for Speed Aids and, uh, of course, the Walter Bull stuff and the Economakis as well, that's what got us going because in those days, the only way that a racer could be mentioned or a race be mentioned in the newspaper is somebody had to get his ass killed. <laughs> <clears throat> and a matter of fact, we had a set of initials that said a word which meant you have to be killed to be mentioned. That's, I'm serious. Other than the Indianapolis race, now that, the winner of the Indianapolis, he was a hero forever. More so even than now. But every other racer in the world, we had a so social status that uh, was like, they used to explain it to me that you're one notch below a monbacker. Do you know what a monbacker is? He's the guy who stands behind the garbage truck and says, Mon back, mon back. Yeah. We, we couldn't stay in a good hotel. We had to park the race car a couple blocks away from the motel because if they saw it, I suddenly, you know, there wasn't a car there, it's the place full, go someplace else. <laughs> and uh, so O'Reilly and a few like him uh, helped this thing get going, and they never, ever got credit for it. Now, one of the things that I liked about writers, if there was anybody in the whole United States that made less money than we did, it was them. <laughs> I don't know how the hell they ever lived. <laughs> so, O'Reilly and Bernie Kahn, the local writer, after I got through reading the paper every Monday morning, I didn't hardly know what the hell they were talking about, you know, because it didn't make any difference whether we won or not, but whenever we blew up or crashed, as far as they was concerned, the race ended, we won it, and they went home. So, uh, being that special, I wanted you to know and meet Don O'Reilly because here's what I'm thinking. If there's anybody that belongs in this Hall of Fame, he's one of them. And <laughs> we needed people like him to help it to get into what it is. The other day he talked to me and he said, Smokey, did you ever think that it would ever get like this? And I said, not in my wildest dreams could I possibly imagine what in the hell would you know happen. And he, of course, said the same things. But we talk about people who put money in it. We talk about drivers, mechanics, and the various things in it. But I haven't ever heard anybody really pay any attention to those people who publicized this and made the public aware of what we were trying to do, what we were doing, and what's more important was that uh, they, what they published was very carefully censored, screened, whitewashed, and so forth, or we'd all been in jail long ago. <laughs> you know, uh, back them days, if you stepped on a rattlesnake walking around barefoot, you wouldn't even get, uh, you know, sick because from what we ate and drank during those years from four <laughs> 47 to 60 made us immune from everything there was, including AIDS and cancer. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure if that's not true, 80% of us would have died with AIDS long ago. <laughs> All right, I guess that's about all I got to say. I just want, <laughs> want you to know I appreciate what you've done for uh, myself and Margie and the kids and so forth. And, uh, and thank you again. <laughs>